Good morning and welcome. Remember to turn on the light. I think you can all hear me here, but the people who are with us on our live stream need me to be my We're delighted that you're with us. Um, if you're with us online, the bulletin is available at www.nativityonthehill.org. We'll begin with a prelude by Bob.
God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory in the highest. Glory.
portions of Psalm 85, we will respond from the asterisk. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For God is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on, on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear. 
But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. the class 
asking, who is Jesus to me? And maybe his first answer would have been, my best friend, Peter and Jesus who'd been together. There they were on the edge of the sea. Peter knew who Jesus was in his life. But the Gospeler Matthew, who writes this passage years after Jesus' death, has more clues for us, the disciples today, about who Jesus is. First, we see when the disciples see Jesus walking on the water, they might have in mind passages from the book of Job. Job recounts the beginning of creation and says, He alone stretched out the heavens and trampled on the waves of the sea. So walking on the water has this history behind it. God in creation. The Israelites knew God walks on water. Then we hear the tumult, the dark clouds, the winds, the waters that are raging. And we might have in mind the passages from Genesis. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So those images bring again to mind the stories of creation. Peter and the disciples are getting clues that Jesus is acting like God did in creation. This reality, which maybe they can't understand, and maybe it's hard for us, makes the disciples afraid. But Jesus says to them, don't be afraid. He says, take heart. And here the translation says, it is I. Do not be afraid. But if you go back to the Greek, that it is I is kind of a mistranslation. The words are ego eimi, which means I am. So maybe when the disciples heard that I am, they were reminded of God saying to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So when Jesus says, take heart, I am, they would have in mind that sense of God who is the beginning of all things. Peter then calls out to, Joseph, to Jesus. He's walking on the water, beginning to sink, and he says, Lord, save me. He's responding as God demanded the people of Israel to respond. In today's passage from the book of Kings, we hear God saying through Elijah, tell the people to call upon me and strike down all those that look to other gods, those that are looking to Baal, that, god of, that pagan god of that time, those that are kissing the graven image of Baal. Smite them, put them down, but I'm going to save the ones who put their trust in me. And so here we have this clue. Peter, the faithful one, puts his trust in Jesus and says, Lord, save me. Now I meditated on that part and I thought, well, that's obvious. Of course, we trust our God. And when we're in trouble, we call on God. But then I thought about how often we don't call on God. We think our lawyers will save us, or our bankers, or maybe our doctors. We put our trust in systems that we have created and forget that our whole trust must be in God. The theology here is not a simple Jesus is my friend. 
Jesus has shown himself to Peter and the other disciples as part of God's creative work from the beginning. He's the one who walks on water. He calms the sea. He lifts Peter up to save him. He declares, I am. And I wonder what we're supposed to do with this message. What do we do with this deep understanding of Jesus as our Savior? Knowing who Jesus is to us personally and saying it out loud makes all the difference. Praying to Jesus, asking, Jesus, what would you have me do? How can I be part of your creative work in the world. How will I be saved as we together seek to save all of creation, the people, the plants, the animals? In times of trouble, how will Jesus work within us and through us to bring that kingdom what we can take away from scripture today is an instruction about the nature of Jesus more than a gentle teacher who guides us. He is our God, our creator, our sustainer, and our savior. When he lifts Peter up out of the water, he is prefiguring for us that saving grace which lifts us from the chasm of death into new life. He is promising us that through our baptisms, we will be raised up with him, saved from the abyss, brought into new life. Jesus demands of us a faithfulness that goes beyond the trust that we put in other people. He invites us to call him savior, to know him, trust him, and make him the very center of our existence. We are the ones who are sent to proclaim, as the letter of Paul said, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news.
We look for the resurrection of the death and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, let us pray to God, saying, God, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O God. God, God have mercy. mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O God. God, God have mercy. mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O God. God, God have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially our President Joe and our Governor Gavin, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O oh God. God, God have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O oh God. God have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, we pray for our parish members, Jamie, Nancy B, Donna, Dan, Nina A, Mary, Steve, Norma, and our family and friends, Niles, Jeannie, Hudson, Steve, Kathy W, Nancy L, Joan, Eddie, Sandy, Jack, Lou Elsa, Pamela, Bill L, Mary Lou, Kitty, <coughs> Justin, and Kelly, and all who are in danger in the fires from Maui, and our neighbors who are suffering homelessness, that being freed from anxiety, they may all live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O oh God. God have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, remembering especially Nancy Chapman and those who have died in the war of Ukraine, in Ukraine and those who have died in the fires on Maui and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. We pray to you, O God. God, God have mercy. mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to you, o Lord. Christ our God. For yours is the majesty of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Peace to all who are with us online. <laughs> God's wonderful. Peace be with you. There will be a funeral for her on Saturday the 26th here at 10 a.m., followed by a coffee hour in Nancy's true style with her special coffee cakes. So uh, it will be lovely. Flowers given to the glory of God and in memory of Susan Pick's parents today. Um, you see here just a, a, a portion of the wonderful school supplies we received for all children academics. Um, the school that Shana Kenny runs uh, for children of differing abilities. We're so grateful for all who donated and who bought things for them and we'll bless those gifts before uh, we have communion. The um, Nativity movie tonight, we're going to see a wonderful movie, June Again. Um, it's really a heartwarming film. It was recommended by our Nativity movie critics, Eric Batts and Yara Way. Um, it'll be fun. We'll just gather in the kitchen. We have a big screen TV, and Katie's going to bring popcorn. So that's um, next Sunday night at 7 p.m. Everyone's welcome. Uh, Save the date for the pasta dinner in September, the 30th pasta dinner, and I understand a talent show. So Amanda's working on the talent show, Katie and Susan Pick working on the pasta dinner. Uh, see them at coffee hour. That'll be fun, lots of fun. And then, um, of course, we read the news about what's happening in Maui with great um, sadness and prayers. So we will be gathering donations and sending them to the Bishop of Hawaii's pastoral fund. The Bishop of Hawaii is trying to get out emergency funds and supplies to those who've been left homeless by the fires. So um, any contributions. You can go on the Bishop of Hawaii's website and hit the Give button there, or you can donate here and we'll send a check um, to help all those in Maui. We will, with thanksgiving, receive your gifts um, at the altar. For those who are with us online, you can hit the Give button on our website. And if you're joining us virtually, you receive all the benefits of the sacrament by coming with the intention of being united with Christ and one another. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you.
children of all children academics and these gifts. All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of thy own now we give of thee. Amen.
giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time. Gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Savior. Amen. We say a special birthday blessing for all who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, this month, including Rebecca. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is hymn four thirty five.